You're listening to The Magnetic Coach, a podcast for those who want to stand out, be seen, and communicate with clarity and confidence. I'm your host, Linda Ford. Let's dive in. And uh, so the recording is on. So let's just uh, be ourselves. That's all we can be, right? And um, I'm actually, um, I've had quite a day. I had four hours of sleep last night. Uh, I, don't, I, I just couldn't sleep and uh, and I've had a full day, but I and I, I was almost tempted to cancel everything. But I thought, no, I'm not going to let this earth suit dictate what I do. <laughs> so um, but I'm actually I'm having a second revival right now. So I'm in a good spot. I just had a really nice coaching call. So I'm kind mm. of I'm in a good energy right now. Yeah, so, so all I is can well. sense your good energy. <laughs> Thanks. I'll probably crash in about an hour's time. Um, okay, so let's get started. So, hi everyone, and welcome to. Um, I think we are in episode ten or eleven, but who's counting, right? And I have my third guest on the podcast. This uh, I'm really delighted to have Thomas Leamy, who is my fellow Irishman. Of course, those of you who know me, I'm from Ireland originally, now living in the US. Thomas, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Linda. It's a pleasure to be on your podcast and I'm a big fan of it. Doesn't he have a lovely voice? <laughs> <laughs> First time I met Thomas and I heard his voice, I said to you, I don't know if you remember this, Thomas, I said, you need to have a podcast. Do you remember that? I think so. Yeah. And it's funny because at the time I didn't, but I was really trying to create one. But yeah. I realized that I was pushing it. I wasn't letting it flow. So I stopped. And then the podcast I really wanted to create kind of came to me, which is the one I'm doing now. And, and it's beautiful. And I love, uh, actually, I'm going to be on it soon. And I love the whole concept of you focus on one word with mm -hmm. one guest. Mm -hmm. And so I look forward to having it. But it's a beautiful concept. And uh, there's been some, I've listened to all of them. And they're all wonderful Amazing. conversations. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'm great. a Thank you. I, I love podcasts. I'm, <laughs> I'm always listening to them, which is probably why I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't get back to sleep. But anyway, that's a whole different uh, story. So, so here's what I want to, I have been dying to ask you this question, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as you know, I work with a lot of coaches, mostly women, right? Who, um, they're really good at what they do. The coaching, they have high aspirations to share this understanding that we all share. Um, you know, they they just they just really want to change people's lives and um, have an impact that way. But <laughs> here's the big but: so many of them really struggle with putting themselves out there. You know, they've got they've got all this kind of busy thinking about um, there's a lot of fear about being overexposed, like putting yourself out there and, and having other people judge you, criticize you, you know, the whole gamut. Um, and my question, which is why a lot of them kind of hold themselves back, which is a, which is a tragedy. And I want to change that because mm -hmm. we have work, great work to do. Right. And so what I've been dying to ask you is, uh, I don't know if you hang out with a lot of male coaches, because I know you're a trainer slash coach. We, we can talk about that in a minute. But through your male circle, do men have this same problem of, you know, putting themselves out there? And, and even like things like, uh, uh, I'll get real basic, like women don't want to do videos because they're always, you know, the, the inner critic is like, Oh, I don't like the way I look or I look too fat. Do men go through this? <laughs> what, a, what a great question, Linda. Um, I thought you were going to go a completely different direction. But now uh, let me think. So the short answer is absolutely we do. Really? Yes. And more than you may think. I'm actually wow. in a, a few different groups, um, uh, mastermind groups, etc 
where you could say the the topics are uh, the the issues the problems are gender neutral now i know of course a lot of women that uh struggle with with other people's opinions more than men i absolutely do but that doesn't mean that men don't struggle with it as well you know that fear of being judged by the other person is uh, or by other people is universal as far as i can tell you know yeah interesting isn't it um i'm just mm. checking my uh, connection here yeah so i mean i mean yeah do they talk about do they talk about it though a lot i mean you you hear it through is it something that there's a big conversation well, about it or see the type of or the model of psychology that you and i are lucky enough to be to be sharing with our clients doesn't discriminate between men and women it's it's a kind of governing psychology it doesn't see race it doesn't see wealth the human mind is the same 5 year old 9 year old mm -hmm. so i think the 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 challenges that we all face are very very common but you don't hear about it that much because on social media or in other places we're exposed to everyone's highlight reel you know mm, the I wonderful know. yes the wonderful things that that happen but not necessarily what we could call the messy middle mm. the the parts where we learn by bumping into things which is the only real way we learn but with this type of psychology that we where we come from I think it helps a lot because we are not by and large we're not chasing the validation of the likes the comments the other people's opinions because we're not hoodwinked as often mm -hmm. as to where our experience is coming from now if we're stuck in a misunderstanding where we are craving the validation of our friends our yeah. followers our clients that's the wrong way it's outside in not inside it, out yeah exactly but more than anything what does that do linda it puts the focus on us and how we're doing mm. and what that is like it's like running a marathon with your shoelaces on tight you're always tripping over yourself you're not you're not letting the creative potential of your mind flow through you you know? I love I love what you're saying there because and and so um, it really does expose the fact that a lot of us, even though we know all about outside in, inside out, so often we are operating from the outside in. <laughs> Otherwise, this stuff would just kind of fall off, you know, like water off a duck's back, right? But it, it but it's indicative, isn't it, that we're still caught up as much as we don't want to be you know it's still um and and that's what's so beautiful about having your own business at least for me anyway and and I'd love to hear your opinions like when you do put you know yourself out there in your own business uh my business I don't know about you Thomas but my business has been this huge catalyst for my own awakening you know, my own spiritual growth, where it, it's kind of shone the light on, you know. Yeah, you're still caught up, Linda. You know, <laughs> you're still caught up with your with your earth suit, you know. So, yeah, maybe you say a bit more about that. I can relate 100%. And actually, funnily enough, on my morning walk here today in the Azores Islands, I took a picture of some crabs on a rock, very beautiful red crabs. Yeah. And I showed them to my friend here and he said, oh, they're called Sally Lightfoot crabs, which I've never heard of. Maybe they're very common. I really have no idea. Wow. <laughs> but I was reading about them in my office and um, something that they do is that they shed their old skin, they molt. But in such a way, it's absolutely beautiful. They leave such a perfect replica of themselves. Mm. 
-hmm. and then they continue growing. So they leave mm -hmm. the old them behind and then they continue growing. Now, when you're talking about your business as a catalyst for growth, I feel the same, that my company is a container for me to be able to change and up level and leave my old skin behind without feeling guilty about that metamorphosis or that transformation. I want my company to be a fluid entity, not with mm. sharp edges, but with flow, you know? Imagine mm. if like any profession, let's say a painter, imagine if a painter only had blue paint mm -hmm. and for their whole life, they only used blue paint. There's there's so much potential that isn't that's not explored if we don't let ourselves kind of, for want of a better expression, think outside the box or think outside the norm. Right. Um, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. You know, it just shows that I had four hours of sleep last night because I didn't start off by I was going to start off by asking you to tell us what you actually do in the world so we're, we're going to put that in here right now thomas uh because i right. know you've had uh, i don't you know I, I don't really know you at all and um your name has just popped up in the last few months and mm -hmm. i know you've had a whole career with training or, or talk about uh, tell us about your journey like what you've been yeah. doing professionally and when you came to the principles and now how that's changed yeah, great. So it's kind of top of mind because I was on another podcast a day or two ago. And um, the short version, Linda, is for about 10 years. So I went to UL in Ireland. I'm sure you know the yeah. University of Limerick. Yeah. And um, for about 10 years after that, I was in an industry called nation branding. And what that is, is you help a country market itself. So you get oh. attached to a foreign government generally the office of the president the ministry of foreign affairs something like that and you help them work on kind of a marketing strategy to attract in foreign direct investment so oh, interesting wow i did that in about 15 countries i led the project as country director and i met my wife along the way who's from america but i met her in malaysia we, we were both working for the same company at the time and it was very interesting, very engaging, and uh, exposed me to a lot of leaders. We would meet the top 50 CEOs in each country that we worked in along the way. And um, ultimately, I burnt out completely. I, I Why? What happened? I think that I lost the passion for it because we would be, let's say, in Switzerland working, and then we'd be flying next door to Greece, yeah. and we'd be trying to help them compete with each other. Then we'd fly to Cyprus and try to help them compete with each other. So in my mind, or in the job, there was borders, but I think I was feeling less and less borders in the world. And I was feeling that how much we are all the same. It doesn't matter what culture we're coming from, what our bank balance is, what part of the world we're born in or what country, I, I really started to get a sense for that. So I knew that I wanted to work with with leaders, that that mm -hmm. much was clear to me. Mm -hmm. And our last official posting was in Botswana. So I, oh. I was reading a book at the time and I thought, let me just try this. It, it, was, uh, it was called High Performance Habits. And uh, I said, let, like, this stuff is really interesting. Let me just kind of see if I can send an email out and get people to come to the Hilton and teach for a while and see what happens. Wow. I did. It was nice. I didn't exactly know where I was going, but it felt great. So much so that I quit my job after that. And that started the journey of training. That we traveled the world for a while. I would test material in different places to see what stuck kind of mm -hmm. like drawing mud up on a wall seeing what actually makes an impact and um we could live anywhere so we said let's go to greece and we went to greece for a while and we uh started very 
intensely trying to get clients, you know, chasing them. And we were launching a big pharmaceutical event with uh, a few different partners in Greece for training, bringing trainers in from different countries. And um, then the pandemic came. Mm -hmm. So that that's what I always call my tablecloth moment. It was just like <laughs> everything up in the air. Wow. And that that led us, Linda, to um, being locked down in Greece mm -hmm. with no clear strategy. How Not so bad. <laughs> well, this is true. And I was saying that to someone <laughs> recently that it's kind of like if you're going to be locked down somewhere where you, have, <laughs> where, where you have all the islands at your disposal. And that's what we did. We went to Crete oh for a month and then Milos. And it was there that I decided to make because we were working with a few companies before the pandemic and during, but everyone froze at the start. There was no virtual trainings, nothing. So I suddenly went from some activity with huge potential to zero activity with mm -hmm. complete unknown potential. And that's when I said, let me invest in coaching, because surely that's not just reliant on companies. It right. will also be reliant on individuals. Right. And that led me, Linda, to Impacting Leaders, a course by Michael Neal, which I bought and started. And it had, did you find him on the internet or just Googled yeah. him? Or? Yeah, wow. no, it, it was, I was Googling like leadership training, leadership development. Yeah. And I had done quite, quite a few courses in things like neuro leadership or brain-based coaching and things like that for training purposes. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. so these ads were always hitting me and you know, they're, they're annoying, but one of them got me and um, it was Michael Neal and I bought it and I started it. And my first thought was, mother of God, <laughs> the wool has been pulled over my eyes because this stuff, I cannot talk to CEOs about yeah. states, states of consciousness or mm. awareness or draw a movie projector to explain the mind. Like, what did I just spend all this money on? But, <laughs> yeah. but I so, kept but going. You kept, yeah. Yeah, and to what, round what was the, the uh, what was the uh, response? I mean, did you was it initially? Tell us about that. You know, tell us about the insights that you had. What turned you on about it all? And then when you get to take it out, like, how was that? Yeah, so I didn't understand at that time when I, I started learning this impacting leaders course. I didn't tie the unbelievably clear state of mind that I had entered to that material I was learning. I thought it was just because we were on Crete. But yeah. one day I remember saying to my wife, I don't know what's going on, but my wife, my mind is completely blank. There's no sounds. I feel incredible, but things aren't looking better in business. Things aren't improving in terms of, of leads or clients. So I have no idea what's going on, basically. Mm -hmm. And it took me a while to tie it to the model of psychology that I was learning. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's really been life changing. It's been transformative in so many ways because I see what we teach as being the most upstream we can go or the yeah um you know elon musk he said something last night or i saw this quote by him last night it was something like the greatest errors of smart engineers is that they optimize um processes that should never exist Ooh. and that really hit me because I think in the field of psychology, leadership development and training at large, we're optimizing processes that are so far downstream yeah. that it's like almost irrelevant. It's mm -hmm. like patchwork, band-aid approach. Yes, but yes. What we work with is not the the content of our thinking, yeah. not the reasons behind why we think like that, 
but the actual fundamental mechanics of how we work. So not mm. the not the cookies, not the ingredients, but the mm. oven. And when you change the settings of the oven, <laughs> you reliably yeah. produce a lot more delicious cookies, to stay with that analogy. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> analogy. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. So how did your um your corporate people mm. did they yeah. relate to that? You know, I mean, it's funny. Yeah. Be- so I was because just- it was like the Mississippi met the Nile in my mind, like the old content and the new content. And then there was what you would expect with two great water bodies meeting each other. Intense rapids, confusion, chaos oh, in a way. I love these, so, these metaphors yeah. you're coming up with. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so my old content that I was clinging to, the intellectual, the the processes, the meta competencies of the 21st century, the VUCA uh, proof systems, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, all that stuff. I was clinging to it, but that was my intellect, but my heart was taking me in another direction Mm. where, but all that stuff kind of doesn't make sense if we look in this direction. Yeah. So, But there was a period, and I've looked back recently on my slideshows for companies. Oh, that must be interesting. (laughs) Yes, it's like more Mississippi, more Mississippi, more Mississippi, like slowly, 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 less Nile, less Nile, less Nile, Mm. to a point where it's now 100% inside out, 100% um, looking at the oven, not how to chip burnt cookies. Right, you know? right. Interesting. Yeah. Um, however, let me just say that in my work, um, I, I, I'm going to use another, my metaphor is the front door and the, and the side door. Like I, I always like to meet my clients um, who don't know anything about the principles. Uh, these mm-hmm. are people who don't know anything about the principles. Um, I meet them where they are, which is kind of like going through the side door. Uh, going through the front door is like saying, you know, it's just just thinking. It's just like you just tell them about the oven, right? Mm-hmm. But the side door, I do a little bit of that, like meet them where they are, and um, because they're living it, they're they're living their problem, right? And then once I'm in that, once I'm in that door, and I get in their house, then I can start telling them all about the oven, you know. Yeah. (laughs) The vision I had was like a cat burglar getting into the safe of the bank and then going, yay, I'm here. But uh, no, I see it the same way, Linda. But what I've come to realize actually very clearly in the last few months is that what's most important for me is the space I'm coming from. And I know that if I'm thinking about how am I doing or how am I um, performing or is the team here resonating with this? It's the wrong direction. So mm-hmm. it's generally enough to kind of bump me back into a right. little bit more presence and right. just incrementally moving in that direction for me seems to be enough because mm-hmm. then you're speaking to that place in the other client with the, the client you're working with or with the team that you're working with. And <clears throat> It's so important, as as you say, to level with people, but I really find that happens naturally when you're not trying to, you know. Exactly. I mean? Right. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. So what has been the response uh, in these people to what we're sharing? Is yeah. a, a, can you say a bit about that, about how? So, yeah, so I, I well, I've been constantly impressed by the surprise or by the feedback from the Mm -hmm. people that I've been working with. And um, in the beginning, I know it sounds cliche, but I would ask them, what exactly was it that you resonated with? And they would say something that I had no recollection of saying or talking about Mm -hmm. at all, because of course, I didn't. It was their own insight. And once I remember I was doing a training for 
a group of young leaders in the Gulf states, so the UAE, Oman, Bahrain, that area. And this was when I was kind of just integrating the new with the old. I had probably 5% of the content about the inside out approach to leadership development. I called it self leadership at the time. Mm. Everything else was downstream meta competencies, how to deal with volatility, we must be more generous, gratitude, all that stuff. But when in the feedback forms, Linda, you wouldn't believe it. It was the 5% of content that I spent my time on. Wow. With the approach, the examples that I was giving about how we're living in our own thinking. This was what everyone resonated with. Mm. And of course, it's clear to me now, because looking back, I was trying to regurgitate someone else's good ideas rather than working kind of with the steam of my own insights and what I knew to be right. true. So right. I was I, the part of me that was sharing absolute truth from my point of view is what they felt. And the part of me that was was sharing what I thought they needed to know yeah. didn't resonate half as much. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. fascinating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I've heard that similar things from um, the, the, the person who was my first mentor was uh, Robin Charbot and uh, Dr. Ken Manning. I went to, that was the first workshop I ever went to uh, here in Boston. Uh, they, they both live in Boston area. And you, you know, Robin, he's very, you know, um, uh, engineering kind of mind he explains things so beautifully and they shared a lot of their experiences in because they work in corporate you know fortune 100 companies and um, uh, so they've had huge success uh, but I think I, I would assume I, I'm sure that when you start sharing this understanding with these people in in the environment that you share it um there must come a point where they realize wow if i can they must see the implications of this inside out thinking and understanding how the equipment of the mind works in terms of the power it gives them uh and how it in sen in the sense that it's going to you know improve their performance right i mean those dots must connect at some point. It must, it must really be um, an amazing thing for them to discover in the line it, of work that they're doing. It, it really is as well. And what I've come to see, Linda, kind of in a nod to what we were talking about at the beginning with your company and with mine, uh, we both want to grow with the company and not be stifled yeah. by where we think it should be or direct direction we think it should go. What I have been working at for the past few years with different teams, companies, universities has been geared towards high performance, productivity and all that. But what I've naturally began to see is that, well, there's certain things that the corporate world understand very clearly that I can share with them in tangible um, uh, research and reports to show different outcomes. And if we can remove these things, they'll get it very quickly. Yeah. So to kind of be clearer about that, what I mean is I've seen that leaders are very quick to understand if I can remove, air quotes, mm -hmm. stress, yeah, or a baseline level of anxiety from their teams, then high performance or a much more agile mind is almost guaranteed. Mm. If we if we take the flies out of the ointment. You know, yep. so looking at that, like what is upsetting the ship? What is the fox in the hen house? Right. And that's led me naturally to talk a lot recently about 
stress. Yeah, that's because your focus, isn't it? That's, it is that's actually. Your, it is at the your moment. Approach your way in yeah. through the side door. Yeah. Yes, to rob the bank. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it's it's what I see as like you can't build any skill set of note, or you can't build any performance metric of note on a mind that's stressed. Because as our mutual friend would say, Robin Charbot, it's like driving with the handbrake on. Yes. You're, you're not going to get that much momentum up. Or it's like, right. I often say a mind in stress is like a flat tire. It's unable to perform at its best. Yeah. But if, if we help the teams, the leaders, the busy professionals understand how they can dramatically reduce their levels of stress and mental tension, mm -hmm. how much more space is created for not just professional performance, but personal performance. And by performance, I mean being present in a family life yeah. or being yeah. there more of the time. So I see it as like, as Jamie Smart would say, subtractive psychology. But if we look at what they believe the problem is, and help them remove it it's 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 heading in a lovely direction so my company is still very much focused on high performing teams working with corporate uh, leaders but i'm kind of looking more at that area of i think it's great I mean, who doesn't yeah. who doesn't relate to that you yeah. know we're living in a world that is um like i said to my husband last night i said is the world getting worse or hmm. is it just because of social media we're more exposed to it? But it, it it just there's just so much to be stressed about, and um, and so I think it's a great um, way in. And so not only are you here's the here's the great thing about this understanding is that not only are we showing people how to how to cope with stress, but to understand what it is. You know, exactly. it's to understand the earth. I call it the earth suit. I love that phrase. It's the mind body, how it's all working and and how there's another part of us that's separate from this earth yeah. suit, yeah. you know. And that's a key word there you mentioned, Linda, understanding, because that is 100 percent my aim when I'm working with someone, it's to help them understand what's actually happening, not what they think is happening. Like yeah. the example that comes to mind, I was just in America for the, uh, a few months and um, my mother-in-law who lives in Virginia Beach collected us, my wife and I, from Norfolk Airport. It's about yeah. 30, min 30 minutes away. Yeah. And she, she came to collect us and drive us back and i'm not sure if you ever drove between norfolk and i have BD. yeah you have okay. yeah <laughs> well there's a lot of tunnels very long tunnels that go under the yeah. um estuary there maybe it's chesapeake bay i'm not sure yeah but one of them linda when we drove into it this almighty i was sitting in the back they were in the front this almighty sound hit the car like <laughs> And my heart like froze and I looked at them. Both of them continued talking away without any care in the world. And I said, what's that? They said, oh, it's just the manhole covers. Loud, isn't it? And then they kept talking. And I was like, loud? I nearly jumped out of my skin. Yeah. But the, the funny thing is, though, the next few times that I drove through the tunnel, it couldn't frighten me. No, because you understood. Because I understood what was happening, like mm -hmm. the Hindu parable with the snake and the rope. Once you see what's going on, you're not going to be caught as much. Mm -hmm. So when I help people see how they're frightening themselves and this they're innocently generating a stressful state. Once they see that, yeah, it comes with a sense of relief. Like, it oh. sure does. And the mind is built in such a way, if you can say built, because it's an abstract thing, yeah. but built in such a way that it's going to conserve energy. So if it doesn't deem anything a threat or something that it needs to pay attention to, it's not going to bother. So right. that's why our stressful, fearful, 
doomsday thinking, it's not going to oxygenate it as much when we understand what's actually happening. So understanding is key. It's a beautiful thing and it's made all the difference in my life. Um, and that doesn't mean I don't get stressed or get caught up, but the it has a, a shorter shelf life, you know? Mm. And so, um, yeah, and, and it's just amazing to see how that how the mind works and how it's always trying to you know tell you and get you all worked up and uh but just to understand how all how it all works um and who we really are above and beyond the earth suit those two things for me have just changed my life um yeah Mm -hmm. pretty amazing and and the how great it is we get to teach this stuff you know Mm, yeah and I think, you know, oftentimes people will ask me, what were your key insights? Like we're trading yeah. soccer cards or something. Yeah. Here's my insights. What were yours? I don't know what my insights <laughs> were. There was a lot and they're, they're instrumental. But I don't like, I've heard people talk about their same insight for an awful long time and how it can keep teaching them forever. One insight yeah. that certainly relates. I can relate to that. But I know that working with businesses, what I have seen most people realize for themselves is something I learned from Ken Manning and Robin as well, because I also did their course. Um, Oh, you did? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Is that the states were trying to reach the productive states, the uh, high performance states, to to coin your expertise, the confident state yeah. is there when we get out of our own way and when we're not trying to create it. Mm. So like the way Robin Charber talks about that is when are you quietest on the inside? And then he talks about and how do you feel in that particular state? And you would say, well, I feel confident, I feel calm, I feel clear. Mm -hmm. And then he asks, and did you create them? Or did they just show up? Mm -hmm. And well, they were, they were just there, I didn't try and create them. So when people when business people can see that the they're putting the effort in the wrong direction. Mm hmm. They're betting on red instead of black, Mm -hmm. you know, when they can kind of, you know, throw that kind of hair in the soup, it messes things up a bit and uh, in a good way. So they see that there's less to do when they stop trying. Mm -hmm. And like the amount of leadership books in the world, Linda, that have been written, Mm. how many of them do we actually remember? Maybe like one one or two things from some of them. Mm-hmm. And then we go into companies and we try and train them on like a 28 step process to close the deal or something like that, you know? Yeah, <laughs> who can remember? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And what happens if something deviates in step 17? Well, yeah. then there's another manual you need to go into five steps to deal with deviation, (laughs) you know, so it's kind of an endless cycle, like a water wheel that goes nowhere. Yes, yes. When when we can see that we don't have to deal with all the kind of downstream clutter Mm -hmm. when we clear the source. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. And, you know, um, I've personally seen um, my creativity uh, soar for the first time over the last years, you know, um, it's been really apparent to me. Uh, Sometimes my, uh, the creativity, the ideas I have, I can't hold them fast enough. It's like, I got to capture them, write them down or forget, you know, is it's like, sometimes if you've had that experience, like, oh yeah, I want to do this. I want to do that. Oh, that's a great idea. (laughs) It's like trying to capture I've never really experienced that before. So it's like, where does all this come from? I didn't even know I had it, you know? And 
And so it's it's a it's an amazing thing. It's like, wow, if I can tap into that and see what the difference it's making, what else is there? That, you know, um, what else is there to discover? It, I always say it's kind of like I've been driving my car with just thinking I had two gears, but I actually have five, you know, six. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And it's a completely renewable car that you're driving. <laughs> There's no, you don't have to fill it up. You don't have to focus on cleaning the engine. It's self-sustaining. Beautiful. It's po powered from the inside out, you could say. But it's like that, that realization. Well, let me kind of flip for a minute here and ask you, what did that realization do for you? Um, it, it just um, made me want to produce. It, like it, it, there was a natural inclination then to just uh, do stuff, like, like, like create things. You know, I didn't want to just sit with it. Like I've, I've written a book, I've written, uh, I've put together online programs that I've thoroughly enjoyed. Um, a lot of them haven't been as successful as I wanted them to be, but I've enjoyed the whole process of creation. Uh, and I never knew I had that skill. I never knew I had that ability to create things. So did I answer your question? Yes. Yeah. And imagine if you stopped when you saw that one of them wasn't that successful. Imagine yeah. like this is what happened to so many people, which I guess where you would help a lot of people yeah. is to see that you can keep going. You're not yes. under threat. Yes. There's no, you know, the feedback loop isn't what you think it is. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, what is it? Edison? had to fail a thousand times before his light bulb went off. I think it was 10,000 times. 10,000 times, yeah. So yeah. what did books speak for us in our little coaching careers, you know, which kind of brings us around to a full circle here as we finish up here. If you could give my ladies <laughs> some one, one, I'm going to give you one piece of information or, or, or advice of when they are going through uh, and they hear their earth suit, the mind say, oh, you know, you don't know what you're doing. It's too dangerous to put yourself out there or it's too risky. And um, what would you say to get them back in line with who they really are? Mm -hmm. Well, Casting a wide net, of course, because <laughs> normally I'd be dealing with uh, or I'd know the people I'm dealing with. Yeah, yeah. But I think what I'm thinking is you already have what you're looking for. You are what you seek. And if you can touch that space, it's going to be so much easier to create from there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like creating from a with a Rolls Royce jet engine behind you, as opposed to using a little hairdryer engine. When you realize <laughs> what you're part of, what you are beyond the ego, beyond the illusion of self, you can't make a mistake. That's Beautiful. what I would say. Beautiful. Love it. I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that. Thank you so much, Thomas. You're welcome. And it's been a pleasure oh. being here with you. Oh, oh, I've enjoyed it thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs>